I'm Kathleen Staten. I'm the manager of Music Constructed, and I am absolutely delighted to present to you Lori Orth tonight, who will be talking about her journey with space, with recorder and education. Uh, we invite you to put yourself on mute and sit back and relax. There will be times that you can interject your questions to learn more, whether that's in chat or live. Uh, feel free to uh, chime in and interact as best suits you. We've got 30 minutes here on the books, and so I'm going Going to go ahead and turn it over to Laurie, who is fresh off of a presentation with NAFME. What a prestigious opportunity you had, Laurie. We can't wait to hear more about how to engage students with Recorder through STEM. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Kathleen. You guys, Kathleen's a rock star. Um, we went to the same high school together, a couple years apart, but we're like high school buds. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming. I'm Lori Orth, and I'm coming to you live from Augusta, Georgia. Um, these are some of my solar system plushies we're going to talk about later. I wanted you to see them before I do a screen share. Um, I love these guys and I use them in my classroom. I use them for my little kids, but I also use them um, with um, even my middle school kids like them. Um, so, all right, I'm going to show you my presentation and talk a little bit. I'll come back so that we don't just get like um, PowerPoint crazy because I know that's hard, um, but let's do the screen share and away we go. Can you guys see that? Go You're good to go, Lori. Slide, it's, I'm waiting for the slide. There we go. Launch sequence commence. Awesome. All right, so here is my presentation for NAFME. That's a view out of my hotel balcony at the Gaylord National Convention Center and across the water is the Capitol. So it was really, really pretty. And that was me talking. Um, I asked somebody to take a picture of me. I said, would somebody take a picture at the top of the uh, presentation so I can send it to my mom? And a very kind woman took a picture and sent it to me. And so I got to send it to my mom. Like I was here, mom. And okay, next. And okay, there we go. Um, we're gonna talk about STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering. And I like to use the phrase, the arts and the humanities and mathematics. Some people are very much sticklers about, oh, it only stands for visual art. And that leaves us out. It leaves all of the musicians out. And I'm like, no, it's the arts and humanities. Um, you can teach a lot through drama. You can teach a lot through music and with the STEM. So that is what I am passionate about. Um, how am I gonna make a difference with this? Like, why do you care? Like, why is this person doing this? I have gotten really into thinking about my own kids. I have a 21 year old and a 25 year old and they've been going through the whole finishing up high school and going to college and looking at colleges and career and things like that. And they are both in STEM fields. And I just got really, introduced to that over the last several years, including space and rockets. My oldest son got his degree in something called commercial space operations at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And I didn't know anything about commercial space. I was like, what is that? But it's commercial rockets and companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin and United Launch Alliance. And I loved it. And I learned a lot about NASA STEM and they have a huge website that I loved and learned a lot from. And I really want to layer what I do in music education with what I do in aerospace because I've really got to dive into learning about aerospace and teaching it. Um, as, a, as a fan, as an aficionado, I'm not a... I'm not a science teacher, but I bring that love of what a fan would know about it into my music classroom. So I don't give them all the nuts and bolts and details, um, but I introduce my students to rockets and space and they love it. And what that does is it gets them curious and they pay attention more to what I'm saying, regardless of what I'm saying. And we get the job done. We, we get the mission accomplished of learning the music because we talk about the space at the beginning of it. So my goal is to help kids stay engaged in school and to stay curious, 
to do well in school at the younger grades and then to study the STEM on into high school and college, get those wonderful STEM aerospace jobs and really make a difference in their world, in their community and have a seat at the table. It's a long 30,000 foot view, but that's how I wanna make a difference. So, and this is my mission statement. This is on my website. The arts and the sciences must coexist today to develop tomorrow's creative and innovative workforce. We all need to coexist right now, um, but this is what I am passionate about. These are some of my kids, Dr. Willis, my principals on the call. Um, this picture in the upper left was taken from a TV interview that our students had at the very beginning of our um, school year this year at Challenge Prep Academy. And the picture in the bottom are some of my kids last year at a school in Grovetown, Georgia. This is some of the stuff I do in aerospace. I do volunteer at a Girl Scout camp. Um, I'm on staff at my church. I do the children's choir at my church and I do a lot of aerospace education events. Um, I'm getting ready to submit an application to go to a week long program at the Johnson Space Center. Oh, I hope I get it. Anyway, it's a big, it's a big deal. I gotta write a lot of stuff to get into it, but um, I'm hoping I get to go this summer. And then I sing professionally. I do a lot of professional development. I've done things, but webinars are good. I know we get a little part of that um, just through the whole COVID thing. But I had this thought, like how far could I get with an email during COVID? I had the honor of presenting in Nigeria. Now it was through a webinar, but a friend of mine is a STEM and STEAM teacher in Lagos, Nigeria. And she invited me to present at her STEM conference. And as, if you say, how far can you get with an email? Well, I got to Africa, so super excited about that. All right, I wanna to talk to about curriculum that I have designed. This picture is from a project-based learning experience that I did with my students. At my school last year, the school was getting ready to talk to an astronaut on the ISS. And for you music educators, that's called a downlink. And the ISS was going to fly 250 feet, not feet, 250 miles above our school. And we had these radio antennas out there and the students had their, their questions already in practice. And it was a big old deal. I wanted to get the younger students involved. So I taught them one of my songs called Space Explorers Anthem. They learned all about space exploration in the music classroom. And then we kind of choreographed it and I hired a videographer to come out and he videoed them and we made a music video. So that was like the corresponding piece, the, the music education steam piece that went along with all of this other ISS downlink thing. That's on YouTube. It's called Space Explorers Anthem. All right, I also wanna give you some resources and ideas that you can use in your classroom. There's a lovely picture of all of my space uh, solar system plushies. And I also am a big believer in Barbies. I bring in a lot of stuff into my little kid's classroom. Um, I bring in teddy bears and I also bring in astronaut Barbies. And my seven-year-old students, the girls and some of the boys love these. And this is astrophysicist Barbie and the one in the purple and then regular astronaut Barbie. They get to see themselves in these fields and it doesn't need to be a bunch of white guys. No offense to the white guys that are out there, but girls need to see themselves in these roles as well. Barbies are where it's at. All right. So our first song that we're going to do is Elements of Orbit. Elements of Orbit are real terms and math. It's the big math and rocket science in order to get a satellite or a launch vehicle wherever it needs to go in orbit. And that it's all the math that I didn't learn in music school, um, the calculus, the trig, the algebra. And my son, when he was in college, helped me with the words of this song. So it's a song for little kids, but it's called Elements of Orbit. And I do talk about orbit in class and I use my little um, 
spacey guys and I'll say, What's, what does it mean to orbit something? It means that if this is a planet, the other one goes around it. And that's it. I'm not getting any more complicated than that. And they start to know what an orbit is. Um, so here's the song. For younger ones, we just sing it. For older ones that are starting to learn how to read music, I do boom whackers with this. And then it's also, it's in Rocket Recorder. Um, I didn't get to show you, this is my book. We're gonna get to it. This is Rocket Recorder. So Elements of Orbit is in there and I'm gonna play it for you. And I want you to, I've got some pictures of the kids doing it too. that and I teach them the elements of orbit and they repeat it back and then we just do call and response so once they learn that and then I'll they'll go elements of orbit my turn going round and round their turn elements of orbit my turn and then they start to learn it I pass out all my solar system buddies and they go around and um so these are I had a video of these kids um they're just out there playing, having a good time, romping around, twisting, turning. Um, I'm not trying to make it like, oh, let's stay in order. For the young kids, they just go around in circles. And then at the end, I'll say, everybody put your um, plushie on the ground. I'm counting to 10. Find a new one slowly. And then they walk and then they get another one. And we do it about four times until they get sick of it. Um, Lori? Laurie, can you tell us about the high quality of those background tracks that you have? Because I know as a music educator, I'm not used to those high quality background tracks. Yes. Um, you guys, my sister is also a music educator and she is a jazz pianist and she helped me with all the accompaniments for Rocket Recorder. And she plays the piano on some of them. And then most of them are made with an app called iReal Pro. And iReal Pro is an app where you put in the chord changes. You have to know them. I'm not that um, well-versed in the chord changes, the jazz ones, but she puts it all in there. She makes a chord chart and then she sends me the file and the, the app, the iReal Pro allows me to choose what style I want it to play in and what tempo I want it to play in. So there's all sorts of jazz things. There's Latin, salsa, cha-cha, disco, glam, funk. Um, all sorts of fun things. And I've used many of those in the Rocket Recorder accompaniments. And then I also got to go into a recording studio and I sang all the demos. So I am not a fan of kids music that sounds, uh, hey kids, <laughs> I mean, I just, bleh. and so this is has a lot of, um, I don't know, I think it's got a lot of integrity. I like it, it makes me happy. Um, so when I do this with the older kids, I do boom whackers with it or we do recorders. Okay, next, I have a song that we're not gonna do, but your assignment is to go watch it. It's on my YouTube channel, which is Lori Orth Music Teacher, and it's called I'm a Little Rocket. If you teach young kids, if you don't, you don't need it. This is good for four to seven year olds. It's called I'm a Little Rocket. It's about a SpaceX Falcon 9 the video will tell you everything. Also, I have a pointing page that goes with it. I print these off, I laminate them. I have one right here. And I put them on the ground in a circle for my little kids, like placemats. And then as they sing the song, they're pointing to each thing and they get to look at what's on there. So you can go to my website. I've got a free stuff tab. And you can print that off and then take it to your school and use their ink to print off a set and laminate them. Super cool. And the video will tell you everything you need to know. All right, now we're gonna to get to Rocket Recorder. Um, this is one of the first songs um, called Space Suit. And the book has a picture on the left side and the music on the right side. So this is the first picture, it's a space suit. I show it to my students and I say, that's an astronaut on the International Space Station and they're doing a spacewalk. 
that's pretty much all I say. I don't have to go into it. I don't want you to feel like I don't know anything about space. You let the pictures do the talking and you say that's a solar array and they're outside. And then they look at it and all those chemicals start firing in their brain to get them engaged. And then I transition to the music. Here's the first song. This is the easiest song in the book, um, G, A, B, and C. And I'm gonna play you this one so you can hear it, whole notes, half notes. Every, not everything, several of the songs in Rocket Recorder are grouped together and they have the same accompaniment. So there are four or five songs that have this accompaniment. They just get slightly harder. So the next song is called Space Ops. This is a picture of NASA Mission Control. I show them that. This is where they observe the flight. They've got maps, they've got pictures. They can talk to the astronauts when they get to the International Space Station. And here's the music. So Space Ops is very similar, same chord changes, it's just half notes. So I'm pushing these, my students, I'm pushing them a little farther so that they're reading things. Okay, so we're not gonna play that one because of time. My next one is called Space Dog. This is my dog, Talia. And here is this one. This has words to it. I'm gonna play this one and be thinking as you listen to this, about how you and your class could change the words. And I just tell them, where else could Space Dog go? can sing it, they can play it, we can boom whack it. There's a lot of stuff that they can get out of it. Um, my sister is playing the piano on that one. Okay, wait a minute. Um, space dog. Okay, next, I'm going to get out of um, this for just a second. I hope I can do this. Nope. I want you to hear this. I'm gonna hit stop share just for a second. Hi, we're back. Um, I want you to hear this next song. Um, this is a rap that I made and rap. I'm not a rap artist. I know I'm not. It's what I did though with my fourth graders. And you gotta think about kids being really excited to scream in a classroom and be allowed to do that. It was so raucous, but they loved it. And this is called Life of an Astronaut. When I, I'll get back into it so you can see it in a second. I'm sorry, you can't see it. But this was me. Um, the backing track is, mm, I don't, it's not mine. It's from YouTube and it's a karaoke rap of a song by the Beastie Boys. If you play the real thing, it's got some bad words in it. So this is a karaoke. So, you know, you're warned. Lori, can you share the link for that? The link? Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you guys hear that? No, we hear it at all? No. Nope. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. You didn't hear any of that? No. And that is that your rap? Because your rap was so great. Yeah, it was. But if you can't hear it, I'm not going to waste my time because I don't know how to fix it. Um, bummer. It says share sound and it's just not letting us. All right. So let me get back in here. Um, screen share, go away. Ah, hold it. Hi technology. There we go. Okay. So here it is. Can you guys see that? Um, Yes, the backing, the backing track is really cool. I'm sorry we can't play it, but um, it's about going into space 
and the highlighted parts is where the, cl the class will read it and they'll scream those parts. So it's, let's go to astronaut training, learn about systems maintaining, pull some Gs, that's very straining, science for the mission sustaining. And then they all scream, three, two, one, lift off. I'll make some type of a file that we can send out and you guys can hear how it goes. Um, but this is just an idea. You can ask your students to help you with this. Um, there's a lot of rap beats, hip hop beats that you can get that don't have any words to them. And you can do this for older students if you want. Um, and if you are like, I love that idea, but I don't know how to do it. Contact me. I'll help you. I mean that. Write me an email and I will help you. Okay. We did a lot of creative work in my classes where I wrote new songs because of what they were inspiring me to do. And they wrote songs. Um, one of my students, his name was Harrison. And he said, how come your songs have other kids' names in them? Because I had songs from a couple years back. He said, can you write us a song with our names in them? And I thought, yeah, I will. And so I wrote him a song. I wrote him a song called the USS Harrison. And it's about a spaceship called the USS Harrison on our way to Mars. And I taught it to the entire elementary school. So these kids were walking around the school singing, on the USS Harrison, on the USS Harrison, on our way to Mars. And it was fun. And he's probably like, I'm so embarrassed. But I was like, you ask me for it. And there you go. Um, I've got a lot of other things. I do have a song on there called Barfing in Space. That is not out in the land of like you could purchase it yet. But if you start doing this in your classroom and we can talk about it, I will share barfing in space with you, but you have to earn it. Okay. I'd have a, a video of this on my YouTube channel. So you can listen to it if you're intrigued, like what is that? <laughs> okay. Um, I've got a lot of classroom hacks for you for um, free stuff from NASA. They have a lot of free posters. Of course, you're gonna use some printer ink, but you can go just Google free NASA posters if you wanna make a bulletin board about this and go nuts. There's lots of things that you can use for that. Um, you could create something with the NASA logo and I like the note heads, but that's called the NASA meatball logo. Um, there's a NASA selfie app, love it. It's free, you can get it and you just, you can aim it at a person or you can aim it at a picture. Like these two were taken from my computer. I just aimed my camera at my computer with these pictures. So if you have a, a class, I mean, a school mascot, you can put them in the spacesuit. You can put all your kids in spacesuits and put them around on your bulletin board. So that's a good one, the NASA selfie app. Um, there's lots of NASA Google, uh, new, there's lots of NASA coloring pages. Google them you'll get lost. There's so many of them. And there's some for young children. And then there's some that are much more detailed for older kids. Um, there's also free NASA ringtones. Those are things like from the Apollo missions. Um, Houston, we have a, a problem or, or giant step for man, one giant step for mankind. All that stuff is there and you can use them however you want to use them. I use them on my phone. So when my alarm goes off, I get to hear Neil Armstrong because I'm a space. Okay, there's also pages of astronauts. I love this one. There's several that are like this where you can see the, um, the picture and then it's the actual coloring page of the picture. This is Mae Jemison. She was the first African-American female astronaut and that's her on the space station several years ago. And it's important for young girls to see themselves represented in space. Speaking of that, we are getting ready to have the Artemis mission. That's the big orange rocket that's supposed to launch on November 14th at midnight Eastern time. And I do have a video on my YouTube channel about it. And it's called the Space Launch System. That's the name of the rocket. And so you can go watch that. Um, it's in Rocket Recorder. And I talk all about it so you can watch the video. It's got a recorder lesson in it. And then you can feel like, I know what this is about. And you can show it to your students as you get ready to watch that launch, which hopefully you will because you're gonna be space fans after this. All right, here's my astronaut picture. I love this. You need to put this on your bulletin board and we're almost done. Um, I've got 
Jessica Meir playing the piccolo up in the upper left corner. I've got Katie Coleman playing the flute on the space station. Um, she did a duet with a rock star named Ian Anderson. All of these are on YouTube. You can go watch them. Upper right-hand corner, that's Commander Kirkfield from Canada. The astronaut Chris Hadfield, he is such a mega star. He even created a CD of music on the ISS. And he's written a book. You must go get it. It's called The Apollo Murder. Such a good book. Bottom is uh, Jessica Muir. I heard on a podcast that she was going to bring a saxophone her because there was a saxophone on the station. I was like, <sighs> so you can watch a video of it. Um, on in the middle of the bottom with all the guys sitting on ISS. Um, it looks like an Irish, but I learned something from listening to a podcast with Chris Hadfield. See the guy playing the drum, the drum. That is from the Russian Space Agency. It's a biocontainment container. It's part of their potty. Hopefully it's a spare. Hopefully it wasn't being used, but I was like, God, so resourceful. For a drum, oh, wait, I know. And playing the keyboard to it, strapped to the side, international speak, it will move away from him. So. I love that. Put these up on your, your bullet students. The astronauts are musical too. All right. Um, due to time constraints, I'm going to skip through some stuff. This is a cover of a video that I have on my YouTube channel, which is called Lori Orth Music Teacher. And this is a 40 minute video that I did for a webinar for Indiana music educators last summer. And it has a lot of this content and it's got a lot of the backstory. I'm gonna go through some quick um, slides right, right now. I'm gonna talk about, talk about them on this video. It's all about how to collaborate with your faculty, which is part of this, but I wanna have a couple minutes. So, so all on that video. Talks about inviting your principal or your intended to perform from Rocket Recorder on your concert. And there's that, and I'm going to, so this is how to reach me at lauriorth.com or just lauriorth.com is my website. And then you can hit the contact button and you can get me. So I'm gonna kill this and we have two sec, two minutes. And we have, yeah, we have a couple of minutes to take questions. And Lori, also, I need you to pick a number between one and apparently 112 which is how many people registered for tonight. And we're going to actually give away one of your books for tonight. So pick a number. Yay. It's not alphabetical, so it's totally equal chance. 91. 91 is Brenda Griggs. If you're here tonight, Brenda, you won. And if you're not here, you'll get an email. <laughs> oh. Yay. Okay, we have a few minutes and I can go over, but I don't know if Kathleen wants to go over. Um, so if you guys have questions, I know that was fast, but email me. If you're like, I want to do this, but I don't know how, or what about this? How do I talk to my teachers? I skipped over a lot of that. So just to confirm, you'll get Lori's slide presentation and links to all of the things that she made reference to tomorrow in an email. But if tonight you have questions, I'm happy to stay on so that you can talk to Lori yourself. So take yourself off mute, put your questions in chat, however you would like to interact, please feel free. And for those of you who can stay on, thank you so much for joining us. And again, you'll get a link tomorrow to everything from PD certificates to YouTube links and everything in between. Um, I just saw a question. I, it went away. I guess I could go to the chat and that would be helpful. How do you purchase the book? You can purchase the book at West Music. And this is super important. All of the accompaniments are digital and they are not on the West Music ordering system. They're on my website. So you have to go to my website to purchase the accompaniments and do a digital download and you go to West to order the book. So Anybody else? I see that somebody's in Ontario, Canada. Woohoo! 
I'm so glad Commander Hadfield. I just have to say that it is worth your time, aside from the curriculum, to follow Lori because her adventures with what she's doing with space and NASA is so far beyond the music classroom and it is so inspiring. Um, you should look for her on LinkedIn, especially. Lori, tell us where else to follow you, but I, I just know that seeing what you're doing with science, especially in music, is is a, a way to capture students who wouldn't normally and maybe engage with playing the recorder. And so not only are you servicing the whole 360 of STEM and STEAM, but you're also inviting students to participate who might have otherwise checked out. Yeah, and I'm sorry I didn't talk about that much, but what I have noticed with teaching this way now is exactly what Kathleen said. Some of the students who might have been minimally involved in my class all of a sudden are alive and excited. And if we talk about a launch that we're going to play the music about, then they'll come back into my class the next week. Mrs. Orth, I got to see the rocket launch. And they're, they're thinking about all of that. Or I practiced this week so I could play the song called Spacesuit. Um, it's really cool. Um, I've had a, a four-year-old who didn't participate. She was very shy. And after we did a song called I'm a Little Rocket, she said, Mrs. Orth, when I grow up, I'm going to be a rocket scientist. This was a kid who didn't talk in my class at all. And that's what she came back at. So um, it's just neat. It allows, you know, we talk about diversity and equity and inclusion, and it's not just like a cultural racial thing, it needs to be like subject matter wise, like let's be inclusive of these other subjects, you will be surprised. And I have to tell you this, some of the kids that were difficult students, they stopped being difficult. And they were the ones that were like the most creative. Can I write a song? write something? Can I write about that? These are boys. I had middle school boys writing poetry about the moon, unsolicited. I had third graders writing songs called Marshmallows in Space, boys. And it was so, like, it blew my mind. I was like, yeah, go ahead. All right, I'll be quiet. What else? <laughs> to a separate unit, or is this integrated through the year? Okay. Um, Great question. Yes. Well, I integrate it through the year, but that's because I have a very different situation than a lot of public school teachers. I'm an independent contractor. I work for the Jesse Norman School of the Arts in Augusta, Georgia, and they farm me out to other schools. So my school principal, Dr. Willis, is on this call, and I teach at her school as a third-party contractor. And so I get to do what I want to do. And... <laughs> I do, I mix it. So that's just me. Other schools, you may wanna find, I want you to talk to the science teachers and say, when do you teach this? When do you teach this um, space unit? And maybe you can do it together or maybe they'll teach it in the spring and you do your thing in the fall or vice versa. Um, so it's gonna depend on what they teach. Like, do they teach about the solar system? Do they teach about um, earth and the moon? Do they teach about the International Space Station? I know in Georgia, they teach about the International Space Station. So that's perfect. I put a lot of that in my thing. What's another question? I think a lot of the questions can be answered by seeing the resource and how you've integrated these great tracks with original songs. I noticed in the poll I sent out how many of you use recorder karate, which is sort of a, a standard for how do you interact with your students with recorder in the classroom. And, um, and it was less than half of you. So if you're not using recorder karate, what are you using as the framework to progress through bag and all of the other notes on recorder? Um, and if you don't have a framework, this is a great way to go because it isn't just uh, music based. It's something that you can get into, as Laurie said, with songs and raps and chants and incorporating that science and STEM piece as well. And I do want to say the free, you guys are all going to get some free handouts and they're from Rocket Recorder. Um, if your school doesn't do anything about space, but you still like that STEM part that you want to turn into STEAM, take my titles off and put whatever your school's STEM project is. Like, if it's about gardening, call the one that's called Space Dog, call that gardening. 
and you can change it to planting seeds in the yard. Gardening is not hard. Got a smile on my face. This garden is my favorite place. Call it good. You, you'll get the accompaniment file. You'll get the music and you can just go from there. Um, so, you know, it's the picture and it's the words and it doesn't have to be that hard. I am not a, a science accredited teacher. Okay. I'm just a creative. I love this idea. Lori just invited you to like co-op her entire thing and then turn it into something that is will work for you. And that's, you know, that's what this is all about. It's about helping you as a music educator. So uh, tomorrow when you receive all of the materials and Lori's contact information and ours, please feel free to reach out and ask the questions that you have about how can I shape my curriculum? How can I manage the classroom? How can I implement these kinds of ideas into my daily routine? And uh, Music Constructed as well as Lori Earth are right there and ready to help you. How's that for a free session? Win a book, get tracks, get, implement it into your classroom and have all the resources you need. We're so grateful uh, that you joined us tonight whether it was live or asynchronously, and we'll make sure that you have all the information you need to be able to create your recorder program and be successful, whether it's here on Earth or in outer space. Thanks so much for joining us, especially thank you to Lori for presenting. Bye, you guys. Contact me. Go to my website, okay? Absolutely. We'll make sure to send that out tomorrow in the email. If you don't get the email tomorrow, please reach out to us and say, hey, I didn't see that thing. Can you make sure to send it to me? <laughs> Have a great night and a wonderful rest of your week.